Hey everybody, welcome to the Fluential and Friends podcast where the story of your life can help somebody else's life story. I'm here with my friend, my guest, Mr. Morgan Aquino. What's up, man? How you doing, my guy? I'm doing great. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> so for people who don't know, Morgan and I actually had our own podcast, what, a year or two now ago? Yeah, maybe like two years ago. Yeah. Unfortunately, COVID happened. COVID killed it. Yeah. Yeah. It caught COVID. Yeah, it did. Man, and Murph <laughs> beat into the ground. <laughs> we had it on life support that we try to make it through the pandemic and it just it just wasn't wasn't happening, unfortunately. No. But man, that was a fun time. And we, we did it with our, our mutual friend Annabelle. I know she's probably listening right now. She's Annie probably, Gaines. Annie Gaines. Yeah. Or Evolve Annabelle now. Evolve Annabelle, yeah. yeah. What was her other name? It was another one. She Annie had, Smalls. Annie, no, that was another one. <laughs> another one? Yeah. Oh, whatever. She had a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> she's at home right now listening. She's like yelling at the <laughs> at her phone. She's like, that's it. not the name. <laughs> Horrible shout yeah. outs. <laughs> so one thing we used to do before every single podcast, though, was for people who are actually watching, we have a bottle of whiskey here on the table that I brought. And so we are going to take a shot to get this going. Let's do it. Yeah. So. I'll try to control the mic here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hope it doesn't collapse on me. So we got some Jameson, got some whiskey. I'm pouring it up for both of us. I got you the bigger shot glass. Ooh. So keeping the tradition alive. All right, here we go. Cheers. Cheers to your new podcast. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's delicious. That was great. <laughs> so, Mr. Aquino. Yes, sir. For people who do not know, who are you? What do you do? What are you a master at? I am a master of many things. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we here today? <laughs> Um, mainly for powerlifting. Mainly for powerlifting. And I know you're a super humble guy, so sometimes I know you don't like to admit it or say it or, you know, publicly at least, but you are probably one of the best natty, if not one of the best natty powerlifters right now in the nation, in the world. The numbers speak for themselves. Yeah. So you compete for the USA PL couple different organizations out there what's the difference with this one so usapl is probably known for like like you like the imba usapl is more for like natties mm -hmm. so it's tested pretty much the organization that's tested the most out of the other feds out there so there is a uspa that's another one there's a drug tested for uspa and now most recently there's a new one with parlith in america mm -hmm. which was um so USAPL used to be with the IPF, the international body of competition, uh, but they kind of separated. But let's, I don't want to go into all that, but I, that's why I go to, through the USAPL because they're just drug tested the most out of all of them. Yeah, the best of the best yeah. for the natties, right? All the best lifters in America compete there. So, because I know for, for bodybuilding, right, there's also like multiple organizations you could go through, whether it's enhanced or natural. Do you guys have kind of had the same issue where there's so many organizations that if you just had one natural and one enhanced, you'll have so much better and more competition because it kind of gets watered down, right? Because you have competitors kind of bouncing around at different organizations who are really loyal to them. And so it could kind of hinder the amount of athletes that are in this competition. Do you guys have that for powerlifting as well? It makes it more difficult for the newer lifter because they don't know what which federation to go to mm -hmm. because there's just so many but for the be the best lifters like you said the best competitors they're in the usapl in america uh there's like no water down like the best lifters that are natural are in the usapl okay and it's known it's like it's not like bodybuilding where it's kind of like subjective you're not really sure there's the numbers the numbers don't lie mm -hmm. the best of the best it's by numbers your, your dot score that's what it's called right in the usapl internationally is the ipf mm -hmm. so in 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 the world ipf is king but we're not with them anymore mm -hmm. but east in america it's usapl 
Got it. So it's not really an issue, honestly. Mm. So if you're a power lifter and you think you're the real deal, but you're not in the USAPL, are you really a good power lifter? Like, are you really pushing yourself? Yeah, they're good. They're just not the best. But exactly. Yeah, the best are in the USAPL. <laughs> yep, man. So if you ain't doing USAPL, yeah, yeah you better make the transition because Morgan's waiting for you and he needs some more competition. <laughs> <laughs> So for you, though, you compete at 148 pounds. Uh, what is that in kilos? That is 67.5 kilos. 67.5 kilos, 148 pounds. And so you carry the world record for total. So that's combination of your bench press, your deadlift, and your squat numbers, right? That is correct. So what is that? Uh, right now it's 715 kilos so kilos and what is that in pounds i don't know for uh, <laughs> you know us power bot or our, us bodybuilders <laughs> uh i have no idea just 2.205 times 715 and you get the answer <laughs> okay let me see carry the one <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah so obviously just crazy and you also have the um or you have multiple american records as well which which records are those well, one of them's the total and okay. the other ones i'm pretty known for my bench press yeah, it's pretty insane i've seen that that was at nationals, right? Yeah, in Vegas. at nationals in Vegas. Hey, so what was uh, the bench press? Was I could see this in pounds? I think it was four. I think it was four oh two, but it, it it was sandbagged. It was pretty easy. Dang. <laughs> so you, how much do you think you could have done? Uh, maybe like four eighteen. Wow. Yeah. Four oh two at one hundred and forty eight pounds. Natural. Yes. That is unreal. And so even for you personally, like if I was to see you walking down the street and I had to guess which fitness sport you were, you were in, don't do that anyways, um, I would think you were a bodybuilder because you're very lean and you carry a lot of like lean muscle on you. You have very good muscle hypertrophy, right? A lot yeah. of good lines. Has that ever been something that you probably consider doing maybe one day, sneaking into a bodybuilding competition? Not really. No. <laughs> Man, you would have success in that. So I love bodybuilding. Yeah. I love the gains. I love getting bigger. Um, but looking at people like you who are my friends and I've seen <laughs> the trenches, what you go through, it's not something I want to do. Uh, mainly because I know during that time, it's going to take away from my main goal, which is get stronger. Absolutely. And when you're cutting, that's a lot of time, sometimes even six months, right, that you're in cutting that I'm never going to get back in my life. So I want to master my craft and that's getting stronger. I love it, man. I just hope one day, like <laughs> you already have, I mean, you already have, you're the world champion in, in total. I so saw hopefully one day you're just like, you know what? I'm going to transition sports fully and commit to bodybuilding. Maybe, maybe, maybe one day. Maybe. I'm not saying never, but maybe one, <laughs> not right now. I'm, I'm going to keep pushing it. Maybe I'm one day. I'm going to keep pushing it. <laughs> I'm make it happen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so before you were the, world record total holder who was morgan like how was your life growing up in high school were you always did you always have a gift for powerlifting when when did it kind of get discovered i don't think i i don't think i had a gift for powerlifting i still don't think i have a gift for powerlifting Just it's hard hard work yeah i mean i mean i'm 33 so it's taken a long time it's not like i'm some freak just super strong you know um in high school, I didn't, I started training right before high school for football uh, because growing up, I was just a smaller guy. I think going from eighth grade to high school, ninth grade, I think I remember I was like maybe five, five foot one that summer. Mm -hmm. and I was just a small dude. And I was like, man, I got to do something um, to get bigger or something I have to do a sport or something so I don't get bullied. Right. Because it's just people. People, just, are, people are assholes. Yeah. So, I mean, being this. I remember my girlfriend was. My girlfriend was taller than me in eighth grade. So, I would get picked on all the time. Mm -hmm. So, I was, you know, I'm tired of getting picked on. I'm going to go do something. And uh, I started working out for football. And during the summer, you had summer camp. And uh, I started lifting weights there. Luckily, I had a, an amazing four inch growth spurt. I am now a full five foot five. All right. <laughs> so confidence went up a little bit. And then the same thing started getting stronger, getting more confidence, and then just started playing football. Uh, but never in my mind that I think I was going to be doing powerlifting as more so just get strong so I don't get crushed mm -hmm. by these big monsters in football. Do you remember any of your numbers back in high school, like your bench press, anything like that? 
so I do remember I was, I was actually one of the strongest kids because I was stronger than some of my linemen. Because mm. you always do like a test back then. It was a, it wasn't a, like like a test. I forgot the total exactly, but it was a trap bar deadlift, not a regular barbell deadlift, but a trap bar deadlift, bench press, squat, and I think it was overhead press. And I I remember I was probably top five in the whole team. And this is including the linemen. Mm-hmm. So I knew it was pretty strong, but I didn't know that was that strong. Yeah, yeah no idea what the future was. Yeah, I had no idea. It. But my bench press was pretty insane. I remember that because I was already benching, I think, 315 by the time I was a senior. Wow. And only linemen were doing that. And is anybody in your family like crazy strong like your dad? And Absolutely uncles? not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, have they, has anybody tried? Like, uh, like did, did your dad, was he fit in, when he was younger? My dad, so my, my parents were athletic when they were younger. Okay. So my dad played soccer because he's from uh, Central America, Guatemala. Soccer is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom is actually the better athlete. She used to play softball, volleyball. She was great. Um, so I think I got my athletic abilities mostly from my mom's side. But none of them lift weights. Yeah. So I, I really don't know. So they probably had the gene for it, though. Because, you know, fast twitch muscle fibers are explosive yeah. for what they did. And they yeah. just put it towards a different sport, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, per se. So you're growing up. You're in college now. What are you in college for? So I was, or, oh, what was the goal, at least? Okay. So, okay, you got to keep this in mind. Like, we... I grew up in South Central LA, so it was we grew up very kind of poor. Gangsta, gangsta. Uh, not too poor, you know, mm-hmm. but we lived, we were okay, we we're comfortable, but we didn't have much. Um, so my mentality always growing up with any Hispanic family is go to school and try to make a lot of money so you don't suffer like us. That's right. the message I would get all the time. Right. You want to be better than us. Better than the previous yeah. generation, right. So my mentality going to college was... First of all, I, I never really liked school. I was a good student because I was smart and everything came easy, but I didn't really study. It was just easy. Mm-hmm. made sense. Um, so I went to college and I remember first I was like, okay, what's the easiest route to make some money? And I was like, okay, let's be, let's go through nursing. So I went through, through the nursing program. Mm-hmm. Uh, did not like it. Actually, it was okay, but I was like, why am I doing this? And I got a little bit more mature and I was like, I can't. I can't be a nurse because I genuinely do not care about people's health like that. Wow. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be one of those. You hear these horror stories of people in certain fields, especially in the medical field. Like, they don't really care. They don't take care of their patients. They treat them bad. I was like, I don't want to be one of those people. Mm-hmm. So, let me leave that profession to someone that actually has the passion for helping people that are sick. Yeah. Like, I don't have that passion. So, I'm not going to go that route. Yeah, you're so, just like, doing, you basically, you were doing it for a dollar. I just wanted money. Yeah. Um, so then I was like, okay, well, what else am I going to do? And, uh, I was always into fitness. I was training people on the side starting around 18, even when I was going to college, but I never saw it as a popular thing as it is now where you're like, oh man, you could actually be successful being in the fitness industry. So I never even thought of that at all. So I was like, okay, what else am I going to do? So I went to school for business. I switched majors, went to business, started learning some stuff, um, quickly learned that, in school, they were teaching me how to work for a company, how to manage a company. I was like, I don't want to work for anybody. Uh, the reason this came is because my dad was uh, his own boss. He was a truck driver. So I was like, I don't want to do this. So then I kind of dove into that, started helping my dad with his company and went that route. And then eventually now I was like, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I want to go into coaching. Yeah. I want to coach powerlifters because it's what I like doing. Like my entire life. I knew that I loved fitness. It just didn't click for me. Like, this is what you need to be doing. Yeah. Just because in my mind, I was like, it's not something that's looked upon as like, like a business degree or especially a law back, degree. Especially back yeah, then, or, right? a, or a doctor or it's like growing up, your parent, my parents were like, you either got to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, one of those professions. Right. And to me, it was like, well, if I'm not seen as that, then it's not. I'm not worthy, you know, of my parents' respect or kind of deal. So I never went that route. And now it kind of changed my mind. I was like, you know what? I love powerlifting. I love fitness. Like, let me go this route. So now I'm kind of switching 100% into coaching and powerlifting. Very cool. Yeah. So I do want to touch on your coaching and your team a little bit later. But 
first I want to go into you starting to actually get serious about powerlifting. Okay. Around what age does that start to happen? So I was a late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would just go to the gym to to get buff, be shredded, look yeah, good. Like the majority of us. For the ladies mainly, confidence, because I was a little insecure. So every time you're insecure, you're trying to find an avenue to make up for that. Yeah. So it was fitness. It's like, well, I'm gonna look good and I'm gonna <laughs> try to get women. <laughs> and it, but after a while it was like, okay, this isn't Hey, you know what? There's a lot of men right now listening and they're shaking their head. They're going, Yeah, yeah. That's that's why I started as yeah. well. Yeah. So quickly, you know, that I kind of went over that phase and noticed that, that wasn't that's not it. Um but I actually started going getting into powerlifting because I actually went to a seminar, not a seminar, but it was like a small, uh, like five people. It was like a small group with Lane Norton. He was okay, doing a yeah, seminar. Very cool. And at Barbell Brigade. Mm-hmm. So he was teaching the squat bench and deadlift. Because at that time he was a, well, he still is, but back then he was like one of the best uh, powerlifters in, in the world. And Natty as well. And Natty. And uh, everything about nutrition, I learned through him. Um, so... I was like, okay, let me go to this group setting and learn from him. So I went and uh, I remember he was coaching us. And at the end of the the, the seminar, he was like, yeah, I, don't, I really don't know. Like, I feel like I'm stealing your money because your lifts are pretty good. I don't have much feedback for you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. He's like, by the way, have you ever thought about powerlifting? And I was like, no, not really. He's like, why not? Like, you'd, you'd be top 10 in the nation right and now. coming from Lane Norton, he's a guy who's no BS. Exactly. So if he's telling you something like that, that's got a, yeah, exactly. a lot of fire. Because my friends would tell me that mm-hmm. at the gym. They'd be like, why don't you compete in powerlifting? Yeah, little friends. Yeah. I was like, why don't you compete in powerlifting? <laughs> I think I actually, this was before, this, I had already met you. Oh, dang, that was this was little, in 24 I was days. probably one of those little I was friends. going to 24 and I hadn't started competing <laughs> yet. So it was you, uh, and other people at the gym, they were like, you should compete. Wait, that's why I met you. I met you at the yeah. gym, and I would just see you all the time with your head down and lifting crazy amounts of weight next to me, and I'm, like, trying to keep up, and I couldn't. And I'm like, this guy is crazy <laughs> strong. And that's how we started to, to talk, and, yeah. and here we are now. Yeah, exactly. And then and then I was one of those little friends that was like, hey, man, you should compete. <laughs> nah, you were, the, you, you were the big dog in the gym. You see that guy with the beard? He's, uh, he's one of the best natural that. bodybuilders. So... Um, but yeah, so I, after that, he told me you could be top 10 in the nation. I was like, uh, I was like, I'll, I'll look into it. So like you said, if Lane Norton says you should try this. And at that, at that moment, at that time, he was one of the people I looked up to. So I was like, okay, let me, let me look into this mm-hmm. and sign up for a meet and decided I was just going to compete in powerlifting and it turned out to be, that was pretty good. So I kept going with it. <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously, so when it comes to powerlifting, is there a amateur league, pro league, or is it just a mixture of everything? That's the beauty about powerlifting. There is no, well, technically now the USAPL has a pro, pro, pro league, okay. pro series, but realistically, I mean, that's still new. It, it doesn't matter. Anyone can go in there and just compete in powerlifting. Okay. Got Cause it. the main thing is building a total. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's what I like about powerlifting because at that time, as you know, being a, a natural bodybuilder, because I was I was bodybuilding, mm. not for competition, but I was trying to get bigger. Right. Um, it takes time. After a while, like your body just kind of slowly starts making progress. Maybe in a year, you're able to tell the mm-hmm. difference. And for me, I needed something more like concrete, like right now, something to chase, some some type of goal. Some solid numbers. That yeah. You see progress. Exactly. Progress. So that's what I liked about powerlifting. I was like, oh, okay, so I can actually track if I'm making progress through numbers. Mm. Uh, and that kept me really motivated, kept me really disciplined. And I started pursuing that because of that. So it doesn't matter if you're new, if you've been doing this for a while, like you could be a person going to the gym all the time right now and you could go compete. You might be one of the best ones. Just the world doesn't know it yet yeah. or or not. You might just be starting off, but it doesn't matter. Like, Yeah. And, uh, and I say the same thing about, about bodybuilding because there's a lot of phenomenal people out there that just don't compete because they don't care for it. Right. And same thing for powerlifting. I'm sure there's a handful of people that are just enjoy being strong and they just don't want to go on the platform. And so whenever I like, I won the natural Olympia in 2019, that's one thing that kind of kept me humble. I go, there's a guy right now in a local gym 
in the middle of nowhere who who is probably realistically the best natural bodybuilder in the world and he just doesn't care to compete i go there's always in my head i always think there's always somebody better so don't ever think you're the best you know that's that, that's one thing i like to tell myself just to kind of keep myself humble mm-hmm. no so. that's that's right yeah yeah just there's always people out there you don't even know about them yet so you've competed on the national stage three four times now how many times so 2018 was the first time i was on i competed at nationals i think got third in that one <laughs> a lot of thirds 2018 third 2019 third 2020 competed at the arnold third 2021 2020 nationals did not happen because of covid okay so the arnold happened but that was when covid was barely starting to take off then 2021 again the nationals that one was second and finally this year finally <laughs> we won first nice yes finally and uh, and I remember when you're taking those thirds because we were me and you we were doing our podcast yeah. already. I remember you were taking like third, third, and then you got that second place, and I was like, "You're gonna that first is right there. You're gonna get it." Because um, I remember you were going through some injuries. Your your hip right was like kind of bothering you. You had some chest issues as well. Yeah. Uh, what was going on with that? So I was just I was just pushing too hard. Yeah. Um, just for people who might be having similar issues, let's kind of go more into that and talk about how you kind of rehabbed it as well. Okay. So yeah, I was having, um, it wasn't, it wasn't really a hip issue. It was more like a, like a glute issue and then a quad issue. I was Mm -hmm. pretty much getting muscle strains, uh, pec strains. Um, and I think the reason that happened is because, and it's funny story because before competing in powerlifting, I was pretty healthy. I wasn't getting injured at all. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame powerlifting for getting injured. It's not the power, the way I was, it's not the style of training that got me injured. The thing that got me injured was I started focusing too much on the competition, trying to beat X person. Mm-hmm. So I started pushing harder than I needed to thinking I got to outwork this person. I got to push harder than this person. Cause I got to beat this person or X people. Um, so I wasn't listening to my body. I was pushing past the red flags that my body was giving me. So that's how I got injured. So what, what are some things whenever you're powerlifting, how do you rehab yourself? Like how do you, what are some things that you kind of do on your own to kind of keep your body healthy while you're on these preps to get ready for a show? Honestly, it's just the thing the way I handle it, because every competition so far, it's been, uh, how many competitions I've done? Five, six, six for six or five for five. Always had an injury going into the comp, mm. even this last one. I think this last one I had, uh, I strained my glute like a month before the comp. Um, so there's always something, but the way I handle it is with load management, you gotta lower the weight. Um, the main thing is, of course, you gotta go get professional help. Just mm-hmm. putting it out there. Go talk to your PT or whatever. But the main thing is you still got to do that movement. You got to slowly expose that muscle or whatever is hurt to a lower load because it's going to adapt and that's how you're going to get better. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. Just less weight, be smarter, keep doing the movement because movement is going to help you get better. And that's it. Yeah, you don't just stop cold turkey. Yeah, because right? that's usually what happens. People get injured, yeah. or even if it's minor, they'll take like days, weeks out of the gym, and they'll kind of just be like, "Oh, and I'll go back when it feels better." But if you're not doing anything, if you're not doing anything, yeah, when you don't do anything, it actually prolongs it. Yeah, like, and you're I've, injured way longer. I follow a good page on Instagram called Squat University. I'm sure you probably follow it or at least heard of it. And they say for injuries, like movement is medicine, you know, obviously not for crazy. Like if you tear your ACL, it's different, but for minor injuries, movement is medicine for the, for the, for the body, you know, always try to do something active to kind of help recover certain injuries and body parts, which I completely agree with because even as bodybuilders, obviously we go through our fair share of injuries and strains and stuff like that. And I always try to find a way to work around it, find new ways to warm up and do a lot of mobility stuff. And Throughout the years, like if I look back 10 years to the way I used to warm up for a chest or a leg day, it's completely different to how I warm up and get ready now for a chest or a leg day. Like the amount of movements that I do is so much more that I don't really even stretch anymore. 
it's more kind of like dynamic movements, exactly. which which is definitely the way to go. A lot of science has pointed to doing more dynamic and less static stretching whenever you're getting ready to do, to do these uh, these workouts. So now now we're kind of moving forward a little bit. Third, 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 second. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride, pretty much. Always kind of almost chasing it. So 2020, 22 happens. This year. This year. Mm-hmm. And you finally, finally, finally get that first place. And in the same show, it was the same one you did the American record for bench press. It was at the, also the same show you did the world record for total. Yeah. So it's technically the world record. Um, it's not a, an, it's not at, an international competition, but it's but the still numbers there. the numbers there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what's cool about so powerlifting. Overall, all the stars aligned for this show, right? Yeah, you won the show, bench press, American record, total world record. Yeah, how are you feeling? It's funny because uh, I was getting asked for maybe like the entire month. You know, people were like, "How do you feel being the champ?" I'm yeah, like, I don't feel any different. Mm-hmm. It's like. At, at at the moment, it felt really good. Mm-hmm. I remember I won, and I hugged my coach, and uh, yeah, I kind of got like choked up. I was like, "Damn, finally!" Because right. you just you're working so hard, um, sacrificing so much. Not at least I did. I know not everybody does, but I wouldn't go out to certain places. I wouldn't. Uh, I would take away from even time with my relationship with my girlfriend uh, because those long hours, especially for the SPD days, taking Mm -hmm. long days of training. So, um, it just felt good to like finally like win something, you know, uh, not being second best, third best is no, I'm the best, at least for this year, I'm the best, you know, so it felt good. And, um, I was really happy to, to, to give my coach like that win because I don't take it for granted. Like I know how much time coaching people it takes, how much effort it takes to coach someone. So I've been working for my co- with my coach maybe for like almost three years now. So I was like, he's been great. So I was like, I want, I want to give him like this. So I felt really good. But after that day, it was, it felt normal. Back to day one. Back yeah. To, back to the grind. Yeah, because I kind of, I knew it was gonna happen. Not to sound cocky, but I knew it was going to happen eventually. Not that day, but eventually because you put in the work, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I knew it was going to happen. I felt like I was one of the best. Um, but, yeah, nothing changed. I actually enjoyed it for one day and just went back to work. And I, I knew that I was always kind of under the radar. Still kind of am. But at least people are on notice. So I was like, okay, well, I got to go back to work. Just keep doing what I'm doing because I, I don't – one, I know you, you would tell me like in the past, you would tell me, yeah, you're going to be the best. And, but I never thought about it that way. Mm. It was more so like, I just love training. I love getting strong competitions, like the cherry on top. Yeah. Like whether competition is there or not, I'm still going to train. Yeah. And I didn't want to change anything about that because like I told you in the past, when I was focused on the competition, I was getting injured all the time because I was doing stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. Now that I'm more like laid back, just com- just training for the fun of it, enjoying myself, holding myself to a high standard, like no slacking, but it's more enjoyable. So I just kind of flipped the switch. I'm like, okay, back to training, Mm -hmm. back to enjoying this, back to coaching other people, focusing on other stuff. Yeah. So it just lasted for a day. That's it. No different. Um, Yeah. It's just, it's just pretty, the only thing that's changed is like people know who I am when I go to competitions. Mm -hmm. They're like, Hey, you're the champ, and that feels pretty cool. You're like yeah. you're inspiring me. And it's like, uh, it's, I like to me, it's kind of weird. You're like, you I, know, I just work hard. I'm I'm like, just, I just I train, just man. I, I it's just, just lifting. I but I get it. So, so two things because, as we mentioned, I'm also a world champion. <laughs> yeah, you are. So, so two things that happened to me afterwards. I want to see if you kind of felt the same thing. Um, well, well like when people ask me the same thing, like how does it feel? And, and one thing I would tell them, I go, well. I don't work out to compete. I compete because I work out. Just like what you said, I, I'm not in the gym every single day because I like to step on stage. Stepping on stage is something I just do because I just bodybuild all the time. And I'm just like, man, it'd be fun to step on stage and do something I truly love and I'm passionate mm-hmm. about. And I, and one thing I kind of noticed is that 
after both of us won, we kind of almost treated it the same way. You know, we had a really good weekend. We were both in Vegas, obviously not together, but so I had a good time. We, we had great times. Um, and I'm sure that's something that you probably say to people as well, you know, and like you just mentioned. And number two is music hit different. And let me tell you what I mean by this. Back in the day, before I was world champion, I would listen to songs about being the best. There's a lot of songs like that saying, talk about being number one or being the best. And you kind of listen to that music and you're like, oh, that's a cool song. It's a little bit different when you are the best. And that was probably the weirdest thing for me after I won the Olympia. Like I'd be in the gym and I'm listening to like some J. Cole talking about being the best in the world, you know? And I, I would kind of just sit there and I'm like, I'm the best in the world. Like this, I can relate to this song. <laughs> it, it was it was weird. It was really really weird. Did you tend to have you thought about that? Or is it, are you kind of hearing this and now you kind of like realizing it for the first time? I think in a different way. Okay. So I don't I don't listen to the music. I mostly mostly walk into a room and I'm like I'm probably one of the best in here. I mean that's no, I am one of the best in here. Yeah. You know so. That way, yeah. Mm-hmm. Before it was like, oh, well, I don't know. Now it's like, no, I'm one of the best in here. So I get, I get it. Yeah. yeah. For for me, music was a big one. <laughs> Dude, the champ is here. Yeah, Dude, yeah. I'm like, the champ is the here. Champ is here. <laughs> yeah. He is I. I am him. Damn. I'm start listening to songs now. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. I'll send you a, a few. <laughs> <laughs> send me the playlist. I'll send you the playlist. Champion playlist. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. I do want to go over your team now. I know we mentioned it um, a, a, a little while ago. Strength Initiative. The Strength Initiative. The Strength. and I like the way you say it. The Strength Initiative. Strength. Yeah. How do you say it? Strength. Strength. Yeah. Strength <laughs> Initiative. <laughs> TSI. I'm, I'm going to start a poll, and I'm going to see how people pronounce it. <laughs> you guys can see who you agree with, me or Morgan. So you have that going, um, and you're kind of like a co-coach on this team, right? Yes. Who's the other coach? Josh Lip. Yeah. Josh Lip. And know. Josh is another great powerlifter as well. And great coach. Yeah, great yeah. coach. Good motivator as well. He's a little more, a little more stern. I, I feel from what I know about him, you're a little more. I don't know, man. Apparently, apparently, I don't know. Apparently, I'm I'm stern too. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I I really don't know. Probably because I know I know you a little more on a personal level, I yeah. guess. So when I see Josh, I think I think he's a little more serious, a little more stern. He looks like he would like yell at me. No, he's not. <laughs> he's really nice. or judge me hardly. <laughs> no, like, no, very no. very hard. No, no. Well, so, probably actually. definitely probably. <laughs> so for people who don't know, I actually hired Sir Morgan yeah. to be my powerlifting coach during my bodybuilding off season. Yes, sir. So I reached out to you. And I said, I want to do something different for my off season. Ever since I've watched you go through your process of powerlifting, I thought it was one of the coolest things ever because at the end of the day, I, I'm an athlete. I love doing different sports. I love doing different things that challenge my body. So powerlifting is actually something I've always kind of wanted to take a little bit more serious. I've always done power lifts, mm-hmm. but I never done power lifting, like actually track the numbers and progress the way you have it planned. And so now since I knew I was going to take a full year off from bodybuilding, I was like, I really want to do something different during this off season and take a different approach. And so I reached out to you and I'm like, hey, man, let's do it. I want you to be my coach. I want you to to make a powerlifting program for me. I got so excited. You were so I, I got I that like, text back. You're like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so we went through the process. You made the program for me. And it's it's very interesting. To, to say the least, because obviously it's different from, from bodybuilding and it's still progressive overload the same way you would do it for bodybuilding, but it's just focusing mainly on these three specific movements, the bench press, the deadlift and the squat. But the amount that we do per week, man, and I, I, I complain to you and I don't complain either, <laughs> but man, that first week on the program was the worst. Really? Like as far as, I don't mean worse, sorry guys, but probably bad wording. I was just very sore. Like it was a shock to the body, shock to my central nervous system. It was completely fried. And it was funny though, cause I was looking at the program and the numbers. I'm like, these aren't really like big numbers. Like these aren't really like, it's not heavy, heavy weight. And I was going through the first week and I don't know why I was like crawling pretty much. I was like, what is going on? And so obviously there's like a, um, 
you know, adaptive period for the body to kind of get used to it and progress with it. And as the weeks went on, my body started to start to adapt better and the lifts started to get better and my mindset started to get better. Right. And now things are kind of just flowing with the program. And I love the way you program it because I'm, I grew up playing sports my entire life. So I'm very like, tell me what to do. I'm going to do it. Just tell me, Mm -hmm. give me the numbers, give me the workouts. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to know if, ands or buts about it. And that's kind of how my mindset has always been, has always been when it comes to this type of thing. So the way you make your programs, I love that. It just tells me exactly what to do. You tell me the weight to lift and it's like just plug and play. Do you still have people that kind of struggle to stick to it? Absolutely. Ah, that blows my mind yeah. because, and, and, and I'm not pitching, I'm not saying you, 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 you did not pay me to say any of this. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm being genuine with everything yeah. I'm saying. It's, I, I call it almost like a meal plan, like a, like a workout plan for dummies. It's literally so easy to stick to. And it's very similar to how I do, how I do my programming too for, for my athletes. And I run into the same issues with people, people still don't follow it. But I'm like, man, like this is so simple. Like I just look at the program day by day, tells me what to do, what weight to do. And I make it happen. And then I enter what the RPE is. And for people who don't know RPE, do you, do you mind explaining what that is? Uh, it's a uh, rate of perceived exertion. So it's a one to 10 scale. So 10 mm-hmm. being the hardest you could possibly lift the weight, one being the, the easiest, right? Yeah, 10 being your max. 10 being max. You can't yeah. do any more reps. Mm-hmm. So I love that it's the RPE scale that you use on that. And man, it's such a good program though. And so whenever we created this program, you and I, for, for me personally, I kind of told you, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do like my own accessories. You, you put the accessories on there, but I said, I'm going to kind of do my own because what I did is I kind of made it into a, um, a power builder program for myself. So I'm doing your powerlifting first and then I'm doing bodybuilding accessories after, which I think made it much harder on myself by doing it that way. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm still a bodybuilder, right? And I'm doing this for the purpose of bodybuilding. But just within this last off season, I mean, I probably seen the most amount of growth as a bodybuilder doing this type of training, following your program and then mixing my program in with it. Can you talk, could you mention your, your uh, stretch marks real quick? Oh yeah. So I've been, I've been doing, I've been training since I was 13 years old. Right. And so I've been weightlifting for about 18 years now, a long time. My, and I was following your program. What, what was I? Five, six months in probably if that, or probably less, maybe like three months in, Yeah, <laughs> three months in. And I started to notice I was getting stretch marks on my chest because my chest was growing so fast. Wow. And I'll never forget. I got out of the shower <laughs> and I looked in the mirror and I'm like, am I getting stretch marks <laughs> on my chest? I couldn't believe it. It's Thir- insane. Huh? 31 years old, training for 18 years. And my chest is literally growing so fast. It was giving me stretch marks. Thankfully they, they slow down, <laughs> but I, I couldn't believe that it blew my mind. And before that even happened, one thing I was noticing was how fast my chest was growing. I'm like, Oh my gosh, my chest is getting, this is getting pretty it's yacked. Getting massive. Yeah. And so that kind of validated it that I wasn't just seeing things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty cool. When you sent me that text, I was like, no way. Yeah. Was, he's just gassing me up. <laughs> That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. So th- yeah, I actually forgot, forgot that we talked about I that. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> So you have your team and so how many athletes are you, if you had a guess is, is on your roster right now? Uh, right now I have 45 people wow. Yeah, on the roster, which is pretty nuts because, uh, my goal was 40 by the end of the year. Um, but I hit it before. So 45. Very impressive. Yeah. That's very, very cool. And you're my good friend, so I'm always like, I wish you nothing but the best. Man. Yeah, thank you. So that makes me very, very happy to hear that. Yeah. Very happy. So what, what does the future hold for you? When's your next competition? What do you plan on doing next? Uh, my next competition, honestly, I think it's probably going to be till next year's Nationals mm-hmm. again, which is in September. Maybe, maybe go the IPF route. So go try to go compete at Worlds um, against other countries. Uh not exactly for the competition because honestly i feel like the best 
in my weight class or in the USA. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that sounds kind of like typical American, but it is what it is. I think it is. That's that's what it is. Look at the numbers. Numbers don't. Yeah, yeah numbers, numbers don't, don't lie. lie. The best lifters are here in America, so mm-hmm. I, that's what I believe. Um, but just for the experience to go to that competition, be on the world stage, yeah. um, maybe I'll go for that. But we'll have to see because, you know, it's big expense, uh, life, you know, I have responsibilities. So we'll see what happens. Is there money to be made in powerlifting? There can be. I mean, you can, I mean, there's other big, it's not like a professional sport, like an NBA or something, you're going to be making millions. Right. But you can certainly learn how to market yourself, uh, create a brand of yourself. There's p- big powerlifters that have a huge following that make money, right. have their own clothing line or whatever, uh, brand deals. There's there's always like niche brands and certain, I'm pretty sure there's some for bodybuilding too, like certain supplement companies or whatever. So there's some niche brands in powerlifting as well. So you could get affiliates with them. But what about in the actual shows? Like do they hand out checks? They do, but it's not that much. Okay, like so, what would be like the top? So, like for example, me personally, I won three thousand dollars at this competition. Okay, but it's only one competition, right? So, in the pro series, for example, where USAPL, you can make more money. I think there's a there's a couple people that made maybe like thirty k or something, uh, but you have to do multiple competitions to win money. Right. But there's also these other big money meets, but that's usually on in the untested side mm. whether they have big money, but there's only one guy winning all that. So mm. it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one guy that wins it all. John hack. He's like the goat and untested. Um, what's his weight class? I don't know. Massive, Not big, <laughs> massive. He's, he's jacked. Yeah. But I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't really follow him like that. So I really don't know. But, uh, there's money to be made at competitions, but not that much. It's not there yet. I think it's going to get there eventually. With the way it's going, with the way it's growing, there's definitely going to be money. Um, but yeah, there's other ways you can make money as well. Yeah, just the natural organizations in general are finally starting to get a lot more recognition within powerlifting, within bodybuilding. It's finally starting to get a lot, a lot better. Um, I, I, we didn't even mention like what are your your numbers like what are your maxes right now for your bench your squat and your deadlift I, we we only talked over your totals oh that's confidential I can't let the competition oh dang I can't let them in on that <laughs> huh now so my best um my best squat is I think it was five seventy around there um my best bench is four eighteen and my best deadlift was six forty something I think. I think that's it at 148 pounds yeah i don't walk around at 148 right but i mean that's what you can yeah, that's what i compete and your yeah, numbers yeah. are right there yeah yeah that's absolutely insane very very impressive i'm sure everybody could agree with that yeah. because i am man probably almost 100 pounds more than you <laughs> how much do you weigh what, do you weigh 240 right now uh so my heaviest is like 225 okay so almost okay, right okay. And I'm nowhere near that. Okay. I'm so weak. <laughs> you're not weak, man. I'm not, but. I'm just really strong. <laughs> yeah, just really, you're just a freak of nature. If I had your, like, percentage-wise, if I could lift the same percents that you could, I'd probably, man. There's guys, like, there's guys that lift a crazy amount of weight and, and your weight class. Yeah, see, and I have people come up to me like, oh, you should, now since you're doing, like, powerlifting on a program, you should do a competition. I'm like, these guys who weigh as much as I do <laughs> are lifting insane amounts of weight. Like, yeah, I weigh two two twenty five off season. I compete for bodybuilding around one ninety, but I'm I'm incredibly weak. Like, I'm barely able to squat two plates at that because I'm like at you know four or five percent body fat. I'm like completely drained of everything. My athletic weight, like my strong, or like my good mid mid ground, would be like two twelve. And so, what would be that weight class for me? Like, where, what would I compete at? I think that's 212. Like, would I go higher or lower? I think that's, that might be the 100 kilo class. 220. Yeah. Yeah. And what are those guys lifting, if you had a guess? Uh, For like a deadlift. I think, I think they're over a 2,000 total. So that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like 780 deads. Over 800. (laughs) Naturally? Yeah. Yeah. These guys are strong. But that's like the the top of the top. 
I mean, if I compete, it's to be the top of the top. I don't compete for <laughs> participation trophies. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, but the, the elite guys, yeah, there's it's insane what these people could do. So one thing I do want to touch on as well is this new rule that kind of came out. I know it doesn't apply to the USAPL, which is this new bench press rule, where yeah. now the elbow joint has to pass the shoulder joint in order for the bench press to be counted as the white lights as a success, right? Do you think this is eventually going to roll over to the USAPL? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so because it's going to... The USAPL is separated for a specific reason. They don't want to follow some of the IPF's rules and stuff that they say. So they've already changed the weight, changed the weight classes. So it used to be a little different. Um, they've already changed some rules where you can lift your head up. Um, and these other little rules. So I don't think they're going to change over because it doesn't make sense for them because they're going for a different, the different type of market. So the people that have something against that, they're going to want to come to the USAPL. That makes sense. But I don't think a lot of people are going to get affected. Well, Mainly women because they have huge arch arches, but I don't think it's gonna be like a big deal. Hmm. Would how do you feel about it personally? Like if it was to come to the USAPL, would you be like it is what it is, or would you be like that's kind of unfair? My attitude is it is what it is. Right. Adapt and overcome. So, uh, adapt. Whatever. Improvise. Overcome. Yeah. I mean, I mean, pretty personally, uh, it wouldn't be affected anyway. I hit depth. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go elbows to grass <laughs> let's go is that a thing elbows to grass i don't know probably <laughs> <laughs> well i'm I'm probably the first one to say it elbows to grass elbows to grass right, a yeah. bodybuilder just said that for power lifters grass, so if, yeah. uh, some yeah. power lifters don't take that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't i really don't care i think only the people that have like super extreme big arches and like i said women women especially because they do kind of tend to be more flexible and have a bigger arch right uh, but if it's going to affect a lot of women, that's probably going to even out for all women. So that's because a lot of women just naturally walk around like that nowadays. <laughs> don't come at me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay. I'm not. Hey, you know, yeah. what? it speaks for itself, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's whatever, man. It is what it is. I'm not one to complain. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that role might start to roll over to possibly like a sumo deadlift in the same sense when it comes to like range of motion. I'm not sure how they would judge it, but you think it might kind of roll over. The only way it would come to sumo is if they made everyone lift conventional. And I'll, I don't think they're going to do that. If they made that <sighs> switch, that'd be a huge way that federation would die. Yeah. Cause people would be like, what the hell? I don't want to conventional is terrible man yeah i'm sorry but it's but, terrible but it is kind of funny because it is really the only lift that has two different completely different setups right because obviously you could do close stance or wide stance for a squat too but it's not as prominent as a sumo deadlift compared to a conventional yeah so it is the only lift that kind of has two completely different technique setups mm -hmm. so i could see it happening where eventually they might just be like hey you know ha knees have to stay no, because the if elbows. it does happen, that's such a big change that people are going to be like, forget this. I'm out of here. Unless you're somebody who already lifts conventional. Exactly. You're but a lot of people nowadays, because the sumo, sumo is a little bit more advantageous, they go sumo. Yeah. So. Man. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. I busted my back to conventional. <laughs> so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> so did I. That's why I went to sumo. Yeah. I think I was a long time. I think I was like 27 and I was doing conventional over under grip and it was only like 355. And I was with one of my buddies who was like lifting like 600 pounds mm -hmm. and he was like hyping me up like, oh, you could do it. I was like, I don't like doing conventional. I don't want to pull my back. And he was like, no, do it, do it, do it. And I was like, okay. And I set up and I pulled my back. And I remember as soon as it happened, I just dropped the bar and I had a foam roller next to me and I right away to start foam rolling. He's like, what happened? Cause I was just quiet, you know, almost like I just saw a ghost and I was like, I just, uh, Sorry something popped in my back, you know, yeah. but I knew it wasn't my spine. I, I, I could feel that it was on my right side, like the muscle. So I foam rolled, walked to the bathroom, washed my hands and I got stuck in that lean forward position when I was washing, washing my hands, but it goes take a step back and I couldn't even stand up straight. And I was like, this is not good. Yeah. Went home, tried to get out of my car. Same thing. I was stuck in that seated position. I had to like use my hands to prop myself up. Man, I couldn't like put my socks on for like five days. It was so bad. So 
let me share a story with you then. <laughs> <laughs> so after Nats, after this year's competition, I, so I won, right? I'm on a high for like a week. I'm like, I'm a champ, whatever. And, but I still have life duties. So yeah. I still got to take out the dog to walk in the mornings. So I took him out one morning and went to this park. Butch. Butch. And uh, I was running with him because there's like this little park. Uh, but the, the grass was wet and there's like little, there's like this section where it has a lot of plants just like sticking out. Kind of looks like a jungle, but a little miniature one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was running with him and then we, we cut a corner and I slipped. Oh my god! And I landed on a log <sighs> and I hurt my back, my lower back. Like I uh, felt something and it was really painful. And I was like, man, like this, this hurts. Let's As see. you're midair, are you just thinking like, this is why powerlifters don't run. <laughs> no, man, I'm an athlete. You ran, you ran for the first time. <laughs> no, man, I'm an athlete. Don't do me like that. <laughs> um, Just slow motion. But I actually felt like, you know how the cartoons, like they slip on a banana? Yeah. That's exactly that's how, how I, that's that, how that's I exactly, it. That's exactly how it happened. <laughs> but it was just on wet grass. <laughs> and I landed on this log. And I remember I got up and I was like, man, this is really painful. Mm. Uh, but then the next day for the off season my coach had programmed me for the first time ever since i've been working for him with him uh conventional deadlifts mm. so i went to the gym and my back was kind of achy and i was like at first i was like maybe it's just sore like the bone area is by my spine by the l5 and i was like all right maybe it's just like i landed it's just the trauma so i'll be fine because mm. as like i said i was getting injured so I, i'm like I'll, I'll work through this this will be fine and I remember I started warming up for deadlifts, one plate, two plate, three plate. And then I jumped straight to four plates. That's usually my warm ups. And I was like, okay. As soon as I lifted that fourth, and I was feeling something, but I didn't really feel much. I just felt like a. Mm. And I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. And the next day, I couldn't bend over to put on my socks. Mm. It was so bad and so painful. I had to just lay on the ground because I couldn't move. Turns out I went to get an MRI. I had a bulging disc. Wow. I still have it. Yeah. But for that first week, I could not do daily activities. Right after being the best in the world. So you're yeah. just laying on the floor. And then the joke was like, my competitor couldn't take me out, but a log did. <laughs> yes. My dog took me out. I blame it on running. Yeah, I guess running cardio. Running took you out, cardio. But, yeah, conventional. Yeah, it's not a convention as well. It's just because I was already hurt. I think yeah. the convention just kind of like aggravated it. So, so I do want to speak on. You might have heard of this kind of famous bodybuilder. His name's Chris Bumpsteed, classic physique guy, best in the world, a few years in a row. Never heard of that savage. <laughs> that savage. <laughs> so he has said that sumo deadlifting is cheating on a deadlift. Really? He said conventional deadlifts are the only real deadlifts. Now, him being a bodybuilder, what do you have to say to that? Stick to body, body bodybuilding, my man. Yeah. <laughs> Stick to bodybuilding. I, it's not cheating. Mm-hmm. If everyone could do it, it's not cheating. Yeah. It's part of the rules. Yeah. It's not, it's not banned. That's why everybody's switching to sumo because you can lift more weights. So if everybody's switching over, then. You know what is cheating? What? steroids <laughs> hey it's not in that, in that that federation yeah that's true everybody's on the gear <laughs> everybody's on the gear so following the rules i mean that's what i hear i hear everybody who competes is on steroids regardless of the sport and organization i mean oh could we talk about your <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see don't you can't even play around like that because people are gonna watch or listen to this and be like i knew it i knew he was a natural <laughs> yeah i mean if you're in the Olympia, like the IF, say IFBB, yeah, like it's you know you're on gear. There's no way. Oh yeah, there's no way. Yeah. I remember I went to um, the for Ar- the Arnold mm-hmm. in Ohio. I went to this. I forgot the name of the gym, but it's super popular. And uh, Big Ramy was there. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the guy who won the that uh, men's physique, but I forgot his name. Um, and I remember I saw them in person. I was like, the pictures don't do it justice. Yeah, when you see them in person, you're like, oh. 
no way this person is natural. Yeah. Well, let me clarify real fast. I have no issue with people who take steroids yeah. to each their own, live your life, do your thing. It was just a joke. So <laughs> I don't, I don't care if you take yeah. steroids or not. Um, but yeah, I completely agree. So I've been to a few NPC shows and I, and I have friends who take steroids, yeah, yeah. you know, and I'm super cool with them. I care less um, if they take it or not. I don't judge them, their character based on what they do. But yeah, I see them in person. And I'm just like, man, you are just insanely impressive. Yeah, like, it's crazy. It's insane how far you could push the human body with these substances, you know. But obviously, you know, it comes at a price yeah. that, that we that we tend to unfortunately see every now and then. But um, but yeah, for the people who do do it, though, I mean, thank you for letting me see it. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. Like, yeah, I, like I was saying, I saw big Rammy and he was, he was doing a photo shoot and I was like man this guy is insane like mm-hmm. it's crazy in a good way yeah and I was like it's, it's awing right yeah, you it's see like, it you're whoa. just like whoa yeah like damn <laughs> like the yeah cause like you see the pictures on Instagram but in, yeah I've seen yeah but in person it's just different doesn't do it justice yeah. at all that's why I think that's why it's funny because I know we're going off topic but when I see people post uh, photos or like of competitions I'm like it, it doesn't matter if you're not there in person, you can't you can't tell because mm-hmm. it's completely different in person. Well, it's different when you see it on Instagram because usually when they put a picture up there with other people on the same stage that look very similar because mm-hmm. they're all taking the same substances, right, or similar mm-hmm. at least. And so, yeah, so it, it kind of like desensitizes the look a little bit, whereas when you see them in person, like individual, or you stand next to them and get a picture, you're like – Damn, this yeah. person's a freaking monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, but it is not for me though. It is. But it's I, pretty crazy. It's pretty yeah. crazy. I mean, I, because I think about, it, I go, man, like if I was to run something, I, I'm always curious how, how I would look, but my curiosity isn't that big to which it's it's seducing enough for me to want to take something like that. It just doesn't doesn't do it for me. But hey, teach their own, and for people who do take it, as long you know, just be smart about it. But I enjoy to see you guys look like animals. <laughs> savages. Very, savages. Freaking savages. Impressive. All right, my man. Sir, Mr. Aquino. That's Morgan. a wrap. Again, I appreciate you for coming on the show, taking the time. I really, really appreciate it, man. Um, real fast. Where can people find you? Uh, social media, stuff s- like that. Social media, Morgan dot Aquino mm. or um, strength initiative. Or strength initiative and at Instagram. Yeah. So for anybody who wants to get training, powerlifting, Morgan's your man. I'm more than happy to promote him and let people know that he's a phenomenal coach. Um, so if you guys are interested, hit him up. He is accepting more and more powerlifters. No, only a few. Because I have a cap. Every single powerlifter. <laughs> I have a cap. <laughs> <laughs> no cap. That's what the kids say. Yeah. Well, thank you for for bringing me on. Um pretty excited to see where this goes for you man, oh, man i'm really you. excited really happy for you so yeah i can't wait to see where this goes this new venture of yours thank you much love my guy all right guys thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of fluential and friends and we shall see you guys next time